Hi guys, this is Bass Boomer back with you for a walk and talk. Um, just got done running, so I'm still a little bit out of breath. Uh, please like if you like and uh, share it and consider subscribing. I would absolutely appreciate and love that. Um, so today I'm in the process of reading a book about COVID. And um, I know I had to take a break from doing videos on this. It's kind of a contentious subject, strangely enough. Um, somewhat, you know, along party lines. It's crazy. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is a book called Undercover Epicenter Nurse. And it's written by Erin Marie Olszewski. hope I'm not butchering her name. Talk about debunking some of the facts out there about COVID. She kind of turns it upside down. And I'm going to just um, tell you some of her facts. She's a nurse. Very, I would say, seasoned nurse. Been in the military. Uh, worked at different hospitals from Florida. But went to New York City to help out during, you know, the... Uh, COVID times when it was out of control there. And <clears throat> the whole second half of the book is about the hospital. I'll mention that later. But the first part, talking about COVID and the facts about COVID. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so the first fact that she debunks, um, she says, the infection fatality rate is between 0 0.07 and 0 0.20. Um, and it's pretty much in line with the seasonal flu. I'll just think about that a minute. And I know different people figure those rates from different numbers, and I don't know who really has the final say. Uh, but she cites many um, references and supports for her uh, facts. So, fact number two, it's older, for older folks, it's much, well, somewhat higher, I will say, much higher. But, um, she says if you have comorbidities, of course, if you're in the 70s on up. Um, but, what was interesting, she said it nears zero for children. Zero, okay? So, closing schools makes absolutely no sense. But if you have even one or two persons accusing you of not caring about children dying. Talk about buzzwords and, oh my God, I got to back up. Um, but the facts are very few children die. It's almost zero. So you say, well, I've seen in the papers pictures and I saw the other day, maybe there were 12. 12 from, I don't know what area. But you are always going to find... Um, those exceptions and in this case I would definitely call them you know exceptions if you know it the uh, rate of death near zero so just think about that a minute and it should cause some maybe um, comfort to those places where the kids are going back to school as in Iowa where I'm from and it sounds like they're getting close to for Arizona kids to go back too. Um, interestingly enough, in Arizona, the teachers did a big sick out. Uh, so some schools that were going to open, they couldn't open. Now, talk about losing support in the community. They did. Um, because they're, to me, they are essential workers. And our kids are suffering by not going to school. And these teachers were thinking of themselves uh, more than the kids. And I don't know, you take precautions if you're at risk. Most of the teachers aren't over 70. I have to, I wager a guess. Um, another fact is COVID does not spread outdoors, okay? If I'm walking down the sidewalk, I don't have a mask on. Somebody across the way there is not gonna get COVID from me, even if I'm infected. So, um, 
you know, we have all these feel good measures of wear a mask outdoors, you know, social distancing, all of that. Um, social distancing is the one that, you know, can make some sense. I mean, if you're rubbing up against somebody or coughing in their face, just like the flu, you're going to get it from them. And I would say that's pretty common sense here, too. You know, um, stay away from people. Or if you've got it, just stay home. Or if you're at high risk, just stay home. Um, locking down the entire society did not, does not, never did make sense. There's no supportive science. It's only based on theoretical modeling. And the really interesting thing that she explains is that theoretical, theoretical modeling, the president depended most on um, this modeling done by the Imperial College professor, Neil Ferguson. Okay, and it was almost exclusively due to those models. Now here's the funny thing about that, is that um, this professor, he has a history of over, and it's a massive history, of overstating um, the, uh, the estimation of pandemics. He was wrong in 2002 about the mad cow disease. He was wrong in 2005 about bird flu. And he was wrong in 2009 about the swine flu. And so with a track record like that, I'm not sure why uh, the president and the powers that be are depending so much on him. I know when, you know, there's something like this, it's huge, and you're kind of grasping at straws because this seemed to be bigger and different uh, than what they'd seen before. And so, um, but you know, it isn't really so different in that, um, come to find out, there's a, there's a model that's more accurate that was um, discovered over 100 years ago. It's called Farr's Law. And basically, it's a viral arc. And COVID-19 um, uh, acts the same way. It comes on fast, peaks, and then goes away fast. And it's usually, you know, uh, peaks in 40 days and goes away in 70 days, no matter what you do to mitigate it. Okay, so if you're, you know, if you're out and you're next to somebody who has it right next to them, and you are old and you have comorbidities, watch out. Otherwise, not so much. Okay, so um, interesting. I had never heard of that law, and I might do some more reading on that. Um, but again, she's done a lot of research, and she backs it up. So uh, phase reopenings, reopenings are utter nonsense. But, you know, in the end, um, they'll say it worked. Uh, and, you know, I guess the average Joe will say, well, yeah, it worked. It's gone now. And it would have been gone anyway. It's kind of like taking medicine for a cold. It's, you know, it's not going to go away. You might uh, take care of some of the symptoms or be a little more comfortable. But it's not going to cure it. But it'll go away in seven days and you can say, well, by God, I took that Advil and cured it or whatever. So um, just interesting, interesting, very interesting points that she makes on this. Um, let's see. So like I said, uh, she's from Florida. The experience in Florida was not so bad. But in traveling to New York City, the whole second half of the book, and that's what I'm in right now. I'm almost finished. But she was uh, put in Elmhurst Hospital, and it's in you know one of the poorest areas of New York City. And she talks about her horrendous experience there, and that although there were many, many deaths, and they were attributed to COVID, the actual causes of those deaths, um, they weren't from COVID. Uh, apparently that hospital is kind of a learning hospital. There were lots of residents and, you know, they were pulling people in from like optometrists and different um, doctors with no expertise in the areas that they needed to work with COVID patients. And so consequently, um, 
their fatality rate was very high in that hospital. And if they were put on a respirator, it was about 100% fatality rate. And the sad, sad thing is that um, many of those uh, innovating innovations weren't needed. It was very aggressively done by people who really didn't know how to do them. And uh, if you want to read, you know, some shocking, shocking stuff, read her book because she talks about uh, a resident doing CPR on a guy who had a pulse of 40. And, <laughs> um, even I know that, you know. Um, I have a degree in biology, and um, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out. And um, it was a money thing. They got paid uh, extra you know, for COVID patients, and it was a government government trying to help out, um, but it was a great incentive then to call everything, you know, COVID, death from COVID, and the mistakes were so blatant that were made that, um, I don't know, if somebody looks into it, she, thank God, took actual undercover videos in that hospital. Uh, she recorded conversations, just kind of whistleblower, um, but she has um, collaboration of other nurses too and it's mind-boggling um, you know and of course Cuomo's uh, deal where he sent COVID patients into nursing homes and killed off so many old folks you know these are facts that I know it was a pandemic you know and that it was serious uh, but it was more deadly than what it had to be and um, you know it's blown all out of proportion. Uh, there will be some, I, I would, uh, I wish that some of uh, my friends who are so into the, you know, oh my God, we're gonna die and we're gonna hunker down and not come out till they tell us we can, um, would, you know, maybe, now unless they're old or have comorbidities, um, would go out and go ahead and live their lives. Um, but, I guess to each their own. And I bet after the election, uh, it'll die off because I think it's used for purposes. It, you know, it's sad to say that uh, the party lines enter into this, um, but I think that's what's going on. So again, if you want a really good book to read, uh, that's one that will kind of turn your ideas upside down when it comes to COVID. So, um, Let's see, uh, see if I can, it's, uh, what is it again? Um, Epicenter Nurse, and she, like I say, goes undercover. So uh, please like if you like my video, uh, share it, and consider subscribing. I'm Best Boomer. I'm on every Monday and Thursday, or I try to be, and Thursday I bring products um, that I consider really good products. So take care out there. Uh, talk to you later. Bye-bye.